Hi and welcome to the second part of the Explain Azure video tutorial. In this part I will show you the tool right in action. So let's get rid of the presentation stuff here. In order to show you the tool in action I will just fire up a, a sample query and while this sample query is executing let me show you something uh, different here. Um, first thing is um, Explain Ash is, as mentioned in the tutorial, in the first part of the tutorial, uh, Explain Ash is a SQL plus, simple SQL plus script, so you can simply run it from the SQL plus prompt, like this. And um, before I show you anything else, uh, just let me show you what happens if you do not have the uh, required uh, access privileges to the um, dynamic performance use that Explain Ash uses. Each time you start Explain Ash, it will do a check um, and try to tries to access these views, and it will show you a summary in case it encounters any errors, uh, which views did error out and with uh, which error they um, errored out, so that you have an idea um, why the tool might not work as expected. Nevertheless, it tries to to run them so. Um, we will now get a lot of error messages just in case um, you're uh, interested in only a particular information. It still might be able to provide that based on, on some views that might work. So that is just uh, to make you aware of that, that Explain Ash shows you this um, summary here right at the beginning, just in case uh, there are some privileges missing. Right, so um, let's get back to the uh, query that I ran. So the, the point is with um, Explain Ash, uh, it has a, uh, the, the bad news is it has a threatening number of uh, command line parameters that you can uh, specify. So um, the good news is, is that Explain Ash um, does have sensible default values for all of them. So in, in, in fact, you do not have to specify any of those parameters. Uh, it will either then uh, revert to, to a sensible default behavior or simply use a default value that is hopefully sensible and you, that can be changed in the script configuration section. This is what I will show you in a different part of this video tutorial. So, um, right, and, and since uh, uh, 10 uh, command line parameters to memorize is, is a bit hard, uh, I've also added in the default distribution of the script an interactive prompt part where you basically get prompted for those uh, parameters. So uh, as I said, uh, you can actually run the script without specifying any parameters. Let's see what happens. Right, so uh, it did something. And um, the, the, the crucial point to understand is that, um, as outlined in the, the um, introduction, Explain Ash is about um, getting as much details as possible for a single SQL execution. So um, the default behavior of the distribution of the distributed script is that it um, analyzes the active session history information for um, the identified SQL ID. Now, if you um, do not find, do not specify the, the, the crucial information, the, the, the crucial input to to Explain Ash is the SQL ID, where you basically tell Explain Ash what SQL statement it is supposed to. Analyze. If you do not specify the SQL ID at all, then um, Explain Ash has um, a built-in uh, default behavior that it assumes that you want to analyze the um, previous SQL execution of the current session. So that is basically what, what happened here. I, I left the SQL ID blank and therefore Explain Ash um, checked what was the uh, most uh, recently executed SQL statement of the current session and try to analyze that. Um, there are other ways you can you can basically um, specify this the SQL ID. The most straightforward straightforward way is of course specifying explicitly a SQL ID that you're interested in. That that is uh, of course possible. Um, then I've already showed you um, you can or they can leave the SQL ID blank. In that case, uh, it will try to get the previous executed. Pre previously executed SQL statement of the current session and there is another option you can actually specify a session ID at this uh, first parameter and um, the 
session ID is then used to determine the most recently used, uh, most recently executed SQL statement of that particular session, right? So I can, uh, you can see here, this is a session ID 202 here. So if I open another prompt and run explain ash and ask for what did the uh, session ID number 202 on this instance, then, then we will see that explain ash tries to get the SQL ID using that information and then we will see uh, what happens then. Uh, as you can see here in this example, um, you can, um, as mentioned here, you can either uh, use the command line, you can specify these, the, all these parameters or part of them at the command line, but if you have enabled this in interactive part here where you are prompted for the inputs, you can either override this here again or then specify the parameters here in that in interactive part. Right, so um, let's see what happens now. Now we, we see actually a different um, output of the script, simply very likely because I have executed uh, the explain ash tool already in this uh, session here. So um, of course, if we look for the most recently executed SQL statement of that session, then uh, possibly some activity of explain ash is actually, actually now recorded as most recent activity and therefore uh, explain ash now actually analyzed one of the uh, queries that it ran itself right um, but again we can we can change that behavior because you can in addition to to uh, how you specify what sql id uh, the the um, tool is supposed to to find in order to analyze it you can also um, change the behavior where it actually search for this most recent execution. There are again a couple of uh, cases possible. You can um, have the tool search in the active session history information for the most recently executed SQL statement. That is the default behavior. But if you have a tuning pack license, then you can actually use the real-time SQL monitoring information um, in order to um, search for the most recently monitored SQL execution. I will do that right now here so that basically uh, explain Ash picks up the same most recent execution than real-time SQL monitoring would. This is uh, good for those cases where you do some, some ad hoc troubleshootings or are interested in most recently executed SQL statements and you want to make sure that explain Ash picks up the same as information as uh, real-time SQL monitoring does. Um, because it sometimes is quite uh, helpful to have actually both um, outputs at hand. So the, the because the real-time SQL monitoring uh, lacks some information that Explain Ash uh, provides, and and uh, the other way around, Explain Ash doesn't have all the information that real-time SQL monitoring offers. So it might be useful to have both. So if I now run this, then hopefully we would actually see the same statement captured again by XPlan Ash as uh, before. We can see here that it now um, used this SQL ID, identified this SQL ID and this um, execution instance here as the uh, other one where I ran XPlan Ash in the same session. So let's, let's check this, um, but it's the same, looks pretty much the same. So that is basically also what you can um, influence how explain ash searches for the most recent execution so um, let me just repeat that so you have basically three different ways how uh, explain ash comes to a sql id which is the most crucial information to the script you can either specify it explicitly i will show that later on of course that's basically the, the uh, most um, obvious choice of, of specifying a SQL ID, then you can specify a session ID where uh, explain Ash then searches for the, the most recently uh, executed um, SQL ID of that particular session and you can um, leave this information blank, then explain Ash will default to, to check what the current session did most recently before running ex the explain Ash tool. Um, if you specify a session like like I did uh, here in this 
um, prompt. Then you are also capable for rec because the explanation is fully rec aware. You can also specify a particular node ID, inst instance ID that you basically say I want to um, check what was the most recent execution for the SID session ID 202 on node number 3. Since I do not have a rec environment here, uh, explanation should tell me that it didn't find anything about that which we see confirmed here, so that is also a capability of explanation that you can do a remote node um, analysis. That's of course also possible. Yeah, then um, I've already mentioned this other parameter that is interesting. If if you want to uh, have explanation search for most recent execution, that is um, where it's supposed to search for the uh, most recent execution, and that applies to all the cases, basically, no matter how you um, specify, it should search for a SQL ID. So either of these these, these cases, uh, no SQL ID, a SQL ID specified, or via a session. Um, at the end, Explain Ash will use that information to identify a SQL ID, to analyze, and where does it search for the SQL ID that do you um, specify with that parameter here that you basically say search in active session history, in Ash, that is the, the default behavior, uh, search in real-time SQL monitoring, that's the other option, and in fact, if you disable the active session history um, functionality of Explain Ash, what is all, which is also possible, I will, I will show that in a, in a minute, um, if you uh, turn off the um, active session history part of the script, then it will actually search in um, V dollars, GV dollar session for the most recently executed uh, SQL statement. That is, um, of course, only applicable to the cases where you do not explicitly specify a SQL ID. And um, as you can Im imagine, all these different combinations can, can lead to different SQL IDs that are identified uh, because what is mentioned as most recent execution in GV dollar session can be different from what is last mo most recently tracked in active session history, which again can be different from what is the most recently monitored SQL ID in, in the real-time SQL monitoring part. So you can change in influence here the, the behavior what explain Ash is supposed to pick up. Um, by default, explain Ash doesn't um, check the ROSAW statistics information. If you have watched the introduction part, then you know that explain Ash can pick up um, basically two, can process two row sources, uh, sorry, two input sources. One is the row source statistics and the other, the other one is uh, active session history. So by default, the default configuration of the distributed script doesn't pick up row source statistics simply because usually row source statistics are not enabled by default. And um, how to use the row source statistics will actually be covered in, in, the, in another part of this video tutorial extensively. Um, so, uh, the, uh, if you think about um, how you um, analyze the active session history information, then you um, will find out that Explain Ash somehow has to identify uh, what part, what time range, what time period in the active session history for a given SQL ID it's supposed to analyze. So, somehow it has to find out which entries in the active session, session history uh, explain Ash is supposed to analyze. And from 11G on, this is pretty straightforward because from 11G on, Active Session History has a concept of uh, SQL exec start and a SQL exec ID information, which is something that you can also specify here on the command line uh, as, as an, or here at the prompts as a parameter. With the um, basically these three parameters together, the SQL ID, the SQL exec start, and the SQL exec ID together uniquely identify from 11G on an uh, execution instance of a particular SQL ID. So all uh, entries that are in the active session history for a given um, execution of a SQL ID can uniquely identify with these three parameters. So you can be basically be sure that, that you will pick up only entries in the active session history that relate to a particular execution of a uh, SQL ID. And uh, again, as you can see, you can leave that information blank and uh, again, in that case, Explain Ash um, tries to find the most recent execution 
um, again, either in active session history or in real-time SQL monitoring. The other most obvious way to do that is explicitly specify a SQL exec start, SQL exec ID pair from 11G on, um, because then uh, you would have the possibility to refer to a more uh, to, to, uh, to an older execution that is some happened sometime in, in, in the past, um, which is also a quite common usage of explain ash, or it's actually one of the strengths of explain ash that you can uh, do um, historic analysis for uh, SQL executions that happened maybe uh, even uh, a long time in the past, depending on the availability of data either in your um, AWR in the active workload repository where you have a less granular uh, disk storage of, of active session history information or maybe you even have your own active session history repository. I know of some clients that um, use some own custom scripts to uh, persist uh, the more granular active session history information on disk and it's not it's very simple to, to modify explain ash to, to query such custom repositories as well. So the script is easily configurable and, and uh, ex extensible. That's something I will also pick up in another part of this video tutorial. So um, that's another important part of the parameters that you um, specify which uh, part of the active session history the script is supposed to analyze. Um, if you are on pre-11G versions and, and, and the only version that is supported pre-11G is 10.2. Is if you're on 10.2 then um, there is no such concept like a SQL exec start and SQL exec ID in um, the active session history. So in that case explain ash will behave a bit differently. We will, we'll, can just try this um, to run the same script on, an, on a 10.2 database and see what, what happens there. If we run explain ash and want it to, to analyze the um, active session history information in 10.2. So the, the, the point is that in 10.2, um, as you do not, do, do, not, do not have a concept like uh, uniquely identifying a SQL execution in active session history, you have to specify always the um, time period, that the time uh, start and end date, basically, that is mandatory in um, 10.2. So um, in contrast to what you can do in from 11G on, you always have to start specify here uh, something that, that um, the tool knows which time range, time period it is supposed to, to search for the identified SQL ID. And um, you can see here that we get a slightly different behavior uh, because since there is no, no such thing like a SQL exec start, SQL exec ID, the, the prompt is now a SQL exec start. I, I simply call it the, 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 the same, uh, although there is no SQL exec start column. Uh, it basically determines the, the start uh, point of, of and analyzing the um, ash information and the SQL exec end information is basically um, the end date. Now, uh, if you are sure that, that, that um, there's for this given SQL ID that is identified in the same way like it is, uh, if I do not specify a SQL ID like I did here, then it will try to find the SQL ID for um, the current session. And again, you can have these cases where it searches either the active session history or VDB dollar session. But since we are um, interested now in the active session history analysis, it will search the active session history. And if you are sure that this identified SQL ID is, is only executed uh, roughly in, in, in some time period, you can, you can be rather lazy. Uh, as I do now here, I specify just uh, one hour period that it is uh, supposed to find the most recent execution of the given identified SQL ID within that time period of the active session history. So let's see what happens here on Tenchi. And we can see it looks like it identified the, the basically the, the correct uh, most recent uh, execution, although I specified a 
much wider range and um, that this was this execution that of this current session that took seven or eight yeah um, it only picked up seven seven samples uh, from active session history and um, that's the way it works in, in pre-11G, so you have to specify the, the, the time period always, it's man man mandatory, you won't get any reasonable output if you leave that blank in 11G, from 11G on you can leave it blank and the explain ash tool will search for the most recent um, execution of the identified SQL ID um, in the given source, which you can again manipulate, whether it's active session history or real-time SQL monitoring which is not there in 10G Any, anyway. So, um, what you can also see, I won't go into, into the, the, the details here now, what you can also see that basically um, the information um, that is available in 10G and 11G uh, is different because uh, with each release 11.1, 11.2, in particular 11.2 added a lot of information to active session history. It basically was an information explosion, if you want to say so. It really has a lot of um, information added, in particular in 11.2. But the script is flexible, so if you run it on 10.2, then um, you can see here, for example, since this is 11.2, um, there is even some PGA and temp space usage available from active session history. If you look at the same in 10.2, then you will notice that uh, this information is simply not available here. Uh, and there are some other columns like the top active plan lines uh, information is also missing. So, th so the script automatically um, adjusts itself to the information available. If you run it on 10.2, it tries to show you as much information as possible. And if you run it on 11.1 or 11.2, then there, by default you will see more and more columns that, that pop up, more information that can be extracted from active session history. Right, so um, what else do we have uh, as, as, as parameters? First of all, let's, let's switch back to the 11.2 uh, database here in my connection. So if I uh, run any other scripts that I'm uh, using the 11.2 instance. Yeah, uh, there, there, there's of course another important part um, of Explain Ash that is you get active session history information by default shown on execution plan line level. So that is something that is available from 11.1 on. So the relation in active session history between the uh, sampled activity and the corresponding execution plan line, which is a very, very powerful troubleshooting um, tool. And um, Explain Ash, of course, takes advantage of that. If you are on uh, 10G, then that information is um, simply not available. So that part is then missing, of course. So Xplanash cannot show you the information on execution plan line level, unfortunately. Uh, that's not possible. Uh, nevertheless, the information that is extracted uh, based on the active session history information, even on 10.2, can be very helpful to, to uh, understand uh, where a SQL statement spent its time. Uh, and just one word to uh, the support for SASH. So this version of Xplan Ash also supports this free active session history implementation SASH that you can download. It's open source. You can install it on, on versions, I think, from 7, 8, 9 on. I don't know. I think even, even this may, maybe version, version uh, 7 was in the past supported, but I think the, the current latest version supports from, from version 9.2 on which is very cool because version 9 doesn't have any active session history built in. And um, Xplan Ash supports Sash from this release on and the information that you will get is basically uh, similar to the active session history information of version 10. So well, uh, unfortunately Sash doesn't have this feature even if you run it against the 11 version database, it cannot uh, in get the information uh, on execution plan line level. So it, the output will be similar, quite similar to what you uh, get from on, on execution plan line level. It will be similar to version 10, 
and um, some other information will also only be available if you have the, the officially uh, licensed uh, um, diagnostic pack active session history. But nevertheless, even with the SASH var var variation, you can still get a lot of information. And, and the nice thing is you can even then indirectly um, analyze stuff that ran on pre 10 g but XPlanash itself makes use of some SQL features that are only available from 10 on, so XPlanash needs to run on a 10.2 version uh, at minimum. So, um, But the SASH repository could be located on a 10.2 database, for instance, and could uh, contain information from a 9i database, and then you could run XPlanash in this um, SASH repository and analyze stuff from a 9i database. So that is possible with XPlan Ash and, and SASH. Right, so uh, back to our uh, remaining uh, parameters that, that are of course also um, important to understand what else you can uh, specify. Um, XPlan Ash shows you the, um, the uh, execution plan information, of course, uh, if it is available, um, and, and then even active session history or even row source statistics, of course, on um, execution plan line level. And therefore, XPlan Ash needs to be able to identify the execution plan. And um, if you are um, looking for an execution plan in the library cache, you need to identify the corresponding parent and child cursor. The parent cursor can be identified by the SQL ID, but the corresponding child cursor can be identified by the, the child number. So that is another parameter that you can specify for XPlan Ash. Um, the nice thing is that if you use the active session history functionality of XPlan Ash, then you do not usually do not need to specify that parameter because it simply will be extracted from the active session history information. It's there in the active session history, history so you do not need to specify it usually, but you can specify it explicitly if you want to. Well, why here this plan hash value is also mentioned, I will, I will tell you in a, in a minute. Uh, we have um, then the um, corresponding formatting option for the display um, or the DBMS XPlan display function calls. So XPlan Ash uses DBMS XPlan display functions to uh, generate the um, formatted plan output and then injects further information, further columns into that um, output. So that is the functionality on ex execution plan line level. So you can specify here any valid uh, formatting options for the display, the display cursor and display a WR function that, that I will tell you in a minute about. Then we have um, the parameters that you can specify here, which options um, of ASH you uh, basically want XPlan Ash to analyze. So that is basically um, a parameter where you can uh, influence the, the um, different sections that will be shown here uh, by XPlan Ash. There, there are various sections, as you can see, and depending on, on what you have, um, serial execution, parallel execution, there will be more or less uh, information shown. Again, XPlan Ash detects this automatically, whether this is a serial or parallel execution and adjusts automatically. And using this uh, parameter here, these Ash options, you can, you can uh, influence to what extent the Ash information is analyzed. Uh, usually, since you are probably interested in getting as much details as possible, you can leave that parameter at, at default, which means it tries to extract information as much as is reasonable. As I said, if it's a serial execution, you won't get any uh, sections for parallel execution because it's not, not, not reasonable, so you do not need to influence that here on and this, uh, with this parameter. Uh, one additional usage of this parameter is, is that you can specify um, that you want to basically turn off the active session history functionality of XPlan Ash, which is probably only reasonable if you um, want to focus on the row store statistics functionality part. So you can basically tell XPlan Ash, I want it only to show um, extended row store statistics inf information, then you can switch your active session history off that you would not do by uh, via uh, specifying none here. And if you specify none, 
then Xplan Ash won't show you uh, any active session history information and it won't uh, peek into active session history information at all. So all these queries basically are then um, disabled. And um, this is also the point where Active, uh, where, where explain Ash will behave then differently with the so it has an influence on the remaining parameters. If you do not um, search the active session history, um, then um, if you want explain Ash to search for the most recent execution uh, of a session or of the current session, so if you do not specify a SQL ID explicitly, then it will fall back to GB dollar session to check there for the most recent execution so that is just to have that mentioned as as, as well so uh, to make a long story short if you are analyzing active session history just leave that at default and um, if you are um, sure you want to focus on row source statistics stuff then you can dis dis disable it here uh, with this non parameter and again all these defaults uh, can be configured in the configuration section of the script um, by the way, if you want to understand what these different parameters influence, so which section is shown or not shown, I have um, taken the time to, um, to document this all here in the header of the script, so it probably makes sense to, to, to take the time to read through it. If you are interested in understanding what you can do with all these different parameters, there is a quite extensive description what these different parameters do and, and, and what the different options are and what they mean and what is shown. Um, basically all that what I tell you about here in this video tutorial you can also read here in the header section of the script. So that is um, also helpful to uh, read through this. Right, then we have another parameter here where you can see the um, the uh, different configuration sets that Xplan Ash uh, has. So um, if we're talking about active session history, then uh, with active session history, you can have uh, different configuration sets in Xplan Ash, which basically means uh, you can configure the queries that Xplan Ash uses to um, analyze the active session history information. The default is that uh, active session history, um, the current active session history, which is GB dollar active session history, will be searched and um, also the execution plan will be taken from the library cache. So that is basically the default configuration which is called current. Then uh, you might have the problem that um, you still have information in active session history but the execution plan is already um, gone so it's no longer available from the library cache. That is um, basically what the other configuration for that is called mixed where explain ash um, gets the information from uh, the current GB direct session history view but it will try to get the execution plan from the active workload repository via this dbms explain display awr so um, if you are lucky and this execution plan um, with this plan hash value was captured in your active workload repository then um, explain Ash might be able to combine these two informations from the current uh, active session history with the historic plan information so that you can still get the full plan output which, which can be very, very helpful. And then we have um, another configuration which is called historic um, Ash where you basically get both information from uh, the historic from DBA hist active session history and from uh, DBA hist SQL plan. So via display a.wr you will get uh, the information from this less granular active session history information, which is a very cool feature of Xplan Ash because that's something that you won't get from real time SQL monitoring because by default the reports are not persisted to disk, so um, they will be flushed out of memory aged out of memory and on the busy system this might happen quite quickly. So uh, after a couple of minutes the, the uh, real-time SQL monitoring uh, report might already be gone. And uh, that's one of the, the um, strengths of uh, Xplan Ash that you can do with this analysis also on historic uh, 
active session history information. So um, you can, for example, uh, analyze the SQL execution that was maybe one or two weeks ago, or depending on the retention of your active workload repository, maybe even one or two months ago. And you can still extract a lot of uh, helpful information even on uh, based on this less granular active session history information, as I will show you. Right, so let's see, uh, let's simulate that, that um, case that I basically, um, that I basically uh, no longer have the execution plan line information, execution plan information available. Uh, I flushed the shared pool and now uh, let's run xplan ash again. Again, I will, I will tell it to, to check the, the real-time SQL monitoring information. And uh, that is basically what happens now. Uh, xplan ash detects that the execution plan line is, is no longer available. The, the remaining information is basically the same because the active session history information is uh, still available, but you can see here that it wasn't able to, to find a, a reasonable child number and therefore um, you do not see any, any execution plan line information. But in order to, to give you as much information as possible, explain Ash in such a case falls back to um, showing you the information that is available on execution plan line using a simple query so uh, which can still be very very helpful because you can see the information that is available on active in, in the active session history on execution plan line level so basically these are the columns that you would get injected into the um, appended to the dbms x plan output this information is now shown on on, on in, in this way here um, yeah, as a simple query. Now let's see if we are lucky and can extract the plan information from the active workload repository so that it was pushed already in the past in the active session history. The only uh, condition that needs to be met is that it see for this uh, that, 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 that to find a plan with this plan hash value. So um, let's do it again. Tell it. Uh, to use the real-time SQL monitoring so that we get the right um, SQL ID uh, and then use here uh, the mixed configuration which means get active session history information from current ash and um, get the uh, information about the execution plan from the uh, AWR. And as you can see, of course, um, you know, because I've prepared it accordingly, uh, we were able to pick up the plan information from um, the 8WR and, and these columns that you have seen uh, in the previous execution here. In that format, basically, these columns are now again uh, available on execution plan line level. It's the same information, but of course, it makes more sense to see that information um, in the context of the execution plan rather than seeing just the, 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 the rows that have been identified with activity. So, so that is, of course, uh, much better in understanding what, what, what went on. Right. Um, of course, I could now also um, basically push this information here into into the uh, push that into the um, eight WR so that we, we get this um, active session active session history information also available in the workload repository that would enable me to um, now search for um, the same information basically based on the historic ash information. So let's do it again. Same uh, configuration that, that we, we uh, want to get this SQL ID um, identified. Of course, I could, um, instead of this, I could also simply specify here the given SQL ID, which you can see here, 
this one i could simply specify as the first parameter then i wouldn't have to do it that way but in order to to make it consistent i will stay to this approach here now and now i will tell the script to pick the data from the historic active session history let's see what we get now and you can see that we we still picked up the same information the same sql id the same sql exec start if sql exec id pair if you compare would compare it with what we got before then then you can see it's the same execution instance as it was and as you can see here already with the mixed or historic variation of the configuration you can basically see here that the script now picks up the plan hash value instead of the child number in to identify the execution plan and then we get the execution plan but we can also see here, here a, a very um, significant difference between the output um, based on the less granular active session history from the historic hash and the output that is basically on sec second uh, one, one second gran granularity here you can see that uh, for this very short execution just a couple of seconds only a single uh, sample point was basically pushed into the um, historic hash that is that every tenth sample point is pushed on on, on disk in order to uh, re re reduce the um, amount of data that is retained so um, that is of course a, a significant difference but nevertheless uh, at least to my experience uh, for longer running queries that, that take more than just a couple of seconds uh, the most important information can still be extracted from uh, this historic hash so that is that is pretty cool um, as i said these are these three pre-configured conf configuration sets um, that should allow you to to get the most out of that information but as i've already mentioned um, no one stops you from adding more configuration sets to the configuration. It's pretty straightforward and easy. I will show that in a different part of this video tutorial. And then you could uh, analyze some custom active session history repositories or plan histories, uh, plan re repositories where you store execution plans. Um, it's that, that is ba ba basically what I did for supporting SASH. I just added a fourth configuration that is automatically um, selected uh, when ever uh, explain ash detects that it's run in the sash repository owner it just checks for the existence of, of a particular table that is uh, usually there in in, in in the sash repository then uh, it automatically switches to this fourth conf configuration set and that then queries the fires basically the uh, queries that are specific to supporting sash so that that is uh, quite straightforward and in the same manner you could also support your own active session history um, repositories so that's not really a problem so right yeah so we still get the information from the historic ash here uh, less granular you can also see on the execution plan line level it looks a bit different because we have basically only a, a single sample so that's probably not very representative in this particular case but uh, for longer running queries it's it's still uh, very helpful um, some other parameters that that are um, interesting um, that is um, what I haven't mentioned yet is this uh, comma separated list of columns to show height that is basically that you can tell uh, xplan ash <clears throat> since it uh, injects a lot of columns on, on execution plan line level here in this case it's not that me messy but the output can be can become quite wide if you have uh, parallel execution and you have maybe uh, partitions and so on then this will become really really wide and uh, just in case you know already what you're looking for and then then you can configure here uh, explain ash so that it uh, shows you uh, less columns on execution plan line level um, these other options um, where you basically specify here well, the amount of information that should be analyzed based on ash also influences what is shown in execution plan line level so we can read this up in the uh, in the header of, of, of the script so that it uh, basically influences which which columns 
will be shown on execution plan level, but uh, this parameter here allows you a more granular uh, way of specifying which columns to show or to hide. So it, it, it supports both ways. You can either specify which columns you want to see, or you can also specify which columns you do not want to see, which um, sometimes might make more sense rather than specifying explicitly which columns you want to see on execution plan line level, you can specify which you do not want to see. So for example, in this case here, let's uh, take these uh, three columns here. Suppose I'm not interested in, in seeing them, then I could uh, execute explain ash again and um, Yeah, let's, let's stick to this uh, historic version. And now I can specify here, for example, I do not want to see by um, using this minus prefix, I specify I do not want, to, I, I'm specifying which columns I do not want to see. If you, if, if you uh, simply specify a comma separated uh, column list, then you specify which you actually want to see. And uh, then the names of, of the columns can again be found in the configuration section of the script. And of course, you could also change in the configuration section of, of the script uh, which columns should be shown by default. So you can, can customize the script, of course, there as well. And now, um, hopefully, I got rid of some of the columns. And um, yeah, I actually wanted to see, oh, I missed the, the, the minus sign uh, in front of this parameters, so uh, let's do it just again. So that all of them, all three of them are gone. So you can see now here, these columns are now gone on execution plan line level, uh, whereas in the previous executions of the script, they were there. So that is basically the meaning of that parameter. And uh, last but not least, um, one parameter I haven't mentioned yet, that is here the experimental stuff. Uh, that is, um, explain ash um, can show even more information, but uh, you have to be very careful with that information. And it is also explained in the header of the script what this uh, information is about. And um, it's not shown by default because it's possibly misleading and unreliable. So um, you have to be careful. You have to know what to do if you enable this experimental mode. Um, it, in particular, from 11.2 on, you will then get I.O. figures from Active Session History. As I said, in 11.2, a lot of information has been added to Active Session History. And uh, one of it is um, uh, extensive uh, coverage of I.O. figures. Um, and um, explain Ash can show you that information as well, which can be sometimes very helpful um, to see the, the uh, pattern of I.O., the, the I amount of I.O., even the uh, cell offload efficiency if you're on exadata that is all supported. Um, but um, I found out that this information, for whatever reason, is not really um, always reliable. It's sometimes it's spot on, but there are simply cases where it uh, falls short of the actual IO activity. So it, for some reason, sometimes misses IO activity. I have I've never seen it reporting more than, than actual activity, but you have seen it um, missing some activity. Uh, that's the reason why it's not shown by default. Uh, um, uh, apart from that, it's, it's making the output even more uh, messy. So um, that's also a reason why you might only enable it if you are really interested in, in looking into the, all these I.O. details. But you can enable it here on the, at, at the command line prompt or here with this prompt, you can enable the experimental mode and we would see then, we can just uh, give it a try now and have a look. take it from the current version and switch on experimental mode. And then uh, we have again the problem, of course, that we do not get the execution plan uh, information, but that's not uh, that important now. Um, you can see here that we, for example, get here an IO summary so that we can see here uh, the amount of IO uh, that happened. 
and we can also see that we get here in the so-called activity timeline for each uh, sample point, in this case for each second, you can see the, all these nitty-gritty I.O. details like number of read requests um, per second, number of read requests, uh, size of read requests, uh, total amount of I.O. per second, and so on and so on. So a lot of uh, details can be extracted, but that's only available from 11.2 on. In 11.1 uh, that's or pre 11 G uh, pre 11 2 it's not available. Right. Uh, so um, finally, let's uh, emulate some other uh, typical usage of of uh, X plan Ash, um, and for that I have uh, prepared another query that is actually a, a parallel execution because uh, that's also one of the uh, things where X plan Ash is quite powerful. It offers a lot of um, additional information that is um, available only if you run parallel execution and um, there it even shows some information that is not available from real-time SQL monitoring so it can be quite helpful to use XPlan Ash on top of real-time SQL monitoring in order to understand some, some particular issues that you can have with parallel execution. So that was uh, another sample query that I ran and uh, um, what I want to simulate here now is, is the case of a so-called parallel downgrade. If you, if you do not have a proper uh, resource management in place, um, then you can very easily come into the situation that there are not uh, a sufficient number of parallel worker uh, servers available so then you at execution time get a so-called parallel downgrade so you do not have the expected number of of workers parallel servers assigned to your execution and possibly this is a very simple and straightforward explanation why your parallel execution took much longer than expected simply because less workers were assigned than uh, you would expect it to have them uh, working on this issue. Um, this can easily be simulated if you have, for instance, some power users or in general some concurrent parallel execution act activity uh, so that all your um, parallel workers are um, busy, uh, assigned to some ex execution and therefore are not available to some other concurrent execution. And if you have some power users then this can be uh, very easily be done by, by using a, a GUI tool, for example, that doesn't fetch until the end of the result set and keeps the result set basically the cursor open. I can, I can simply emulate it here, uh, do some crazy um, parallel queries on my, on my system here until um, all of my parallel uh, worker processes are busy. I can I can uh, confirm that now, uh, and that that's also some some very important point with uh, Xplan Ash that um, at, least, at least from 11.202 on, but also in previous versions it tries its best uh, to come up with an educated guess um, to determine the uh, actual um, degree that was used in parallel execution because as you can see from querying for example gv.px session it's uh, very easy to find out the actual degree um, while the statement is executing so here I can see I can he have here requested 64 but I did only get 31 simply because I'm, I'm working here on a four core uh, desktop PC, so Oracle said, uh, you seem, seem to be crazy, why, why do you uh, request 64 parallel uh, server, uh, degree of 64, and it only gave me a degree of 31, and I have another in, uh, execution here where I got a degree of 31, and then finally I got the third execution, I got a degree of 18, simply because I have now uh, all of my 80 parallel uh, servers active because that's the maximum that is configured on this system according to the default configuration for um, CPUs and, and then uh, um, parallel threads per CPU is two so you have eight and then you have a multiplier which is if you use um, depending on the memory management that you use uh, the multiplier is between uh, five and, and ten I think so in this case it's ten and we get then eighty parallel uh, servers and they're all busy now they are all uh, still um, bound to these cursors here that I have open 
the funny thing is that they are not really busy, they are idle because I am simply not continuing my, my fetch here, but Oracle is simply not capable of, of reusing them in, in the, at, at, at the same time for another parallel execution. So right now they are basically assigned to this uh, execution here and I am and, um, I'm basically uh, now uh, left with no um, available parallel service. And now uh, let's simply uh, check here the output from explanash first, what we get. And the, the interesting point here is that um, again um, explanash shows you information or automatically adjusts to, to what you need to see. So uh, for example you won't see get the section for a serial execution, there is simply no point in displaying anything about uh, the parallel degree if you are running a serial ex execution. But we can see here that um, Xplan Ash identified this is a parallel. This was a parallel execution. There were four uh, parallel worker threads that that were, were identified in active session history. You get also then more details about these parallel worker processes. Um, here in that section, which is again only available if you have a parallel execution. And uh, the crucial information that, that I want to show you, I won't go into the details here in that uh, part, there will be a separate video tutorial part where I go into all the details of this parallel execution stuff. The important point is that from 11.202 on, there is an undocumented column added to active session history where I can extract the actual degree used. because. Um, it's surprisingly hard to find out the actual degree once the execution is over. So if you want to find out for an execution that is in the past, that is not running anymore, uh, it's surprisingly hard to find out what was the actual degree used. Um, and it's very nice that at least from 11.202 on, you get uh, the fact from active session history that you can extract what was the actual degree used because it allows you to very easily identify if you had a problem with the downgrade or if the execution took longer for some other reason. But just in order to, to differentiate between these cases, what what happened, was it, was it a downgrade or was something else going on, this information is, is crucial and it can be extracted by Xplanash and extracted by any, anyone uh, from the active session history from 11.202 on. In pre-11202, uh, Xplan Ash at least tries to come up with an educated guess, which can be wrong, as you can see here. Uh, based on the information available in Active Session History, it thinks that since it finds four processes and we have a so-called uh, parallel worker set count of two, which can be uh, derived from the execution plan, uh, it assumes that the actual degree used was two which is unfortunately wrong in that case, but that's um, the best guess that it can come up with. But in many cases, the guess is quite, quite good. Um, yeah, so um, we can see Explain Ash gives you the information about the um, actual parallel degree used and some more information. Let's repeat now the uh, execution of this um, sample query. I have still all my um, still all my um, parallel workers are still um, assigned, not available. So um, this will now be hopefully uh, a downgrade actually to serial, but you can have all kinds of downgrades, downgrades that you maybe end up with a parallel degree of uh, 14 instead of uh, 32 or whatever uh, Oracle can do to come up with uh, the re 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 requested number of, of uh, with the requested parallel degree. Um, in uh, this case here there is, uh, since all parallel workers are busy, uh, it needs to fall back to serial execution. And the point that I want to make is that if I use now explain ash on that execution, then uh, it should be very easy to, to identify such a, a downgrade case. So uh, we can already see it uh, takes much longer than, than 23 seconds because I've uh, used here uh, 
case of parallel execution that I can actually scale on my simple desktop PC here with a very slow hard disk. Uh, since I.O. cannot be uh, used in, in, in such a way that I scale parallel execution, I've made up here a, a sample query that basically is completely CPU bound using these regular expressions here. I can easily burn a lot of CPU and uh, we can see it's completely CPU bound so you can actually reduce runtime by uh, using parallel execution by employing all four available CPU cores it takes less time to execute that query and we can see that here confirmed that it now took uh, 75 seconds and if I run now xplan ash here then uh, we should hopefully see that um, it becomes quite obvious that this here was not <clears throat> the, the expected parallel execution, at least not the expected parallel degree. And here we can see already the first um, information that, that makes us aware of this. So no parallel workers were found in the corresponding active session history information. We can see here confirmed that it took uh, something like 76, 77, uh, 75 actually seconds and um, again, here we have this this part here where we have the the parallel the actual parallel degree mentioned, and, and we can see here this information is blank. The assumed degree is also one. And to make things even more obvious, you get this message here again that no parallel worker activity could be found in active session history. So that is a very nice way uh, uh, to see what is the, the, the uh, actual degree used or was it even the serial execution. So that is something uh, you can very easily <coughs> sorry, tell from, <coughs> from the XPlan Ash <coughs> output. And we can also see here that we're, we're at least at, according to active session history, we were completely on CPU for all the, the, the sample points. And uh, on top of that, um, oh, what I wanted to show you um, as a final example here, again, if I uh, push that into the uh, active workload repository, then uh, I want to uh, show you that um, xplan ash can give you the same uh, information even for historic executions that happened sometime in the past, which is uh, again very very helpful. For example, you you uh, come in on on, on Monday and uh, you should investigate why some batch job on Saturday night um, took much longer than than expected. If you have the active session history information available, even though that less granular active session history information in DBA hist active session history. Uh, you can use Xplan Ash to answer such uh, things quite easily. And that is uh, one of the strengths of Xplan Ash because that's something that you uh, do not easily do with real time SQL monitoring because very likely a uh, corresponding real time SQL monitoring report is uh, long gone um, if the execution is more than, than 24 hours ago. So we can. Uh, Use now Xplan Ash, simulate basically another typical common usage of Xplan Ash by, by querying that, that um, historic information. Um, in that case, I first will, will uh, use this um, information here about the SQL ID that I'm in, interested in and will query the um, corresponding active session history information to show you how you can use uh, XPlan Ash in, in, in such cases. Uh, I want to limit this to this uh, information and, and then they have the most recent um, executions here. So um, that is another common 
uh, usage of, of x explain hash. Now I will I will um, ask for um, a particular SQL ID. And in this case here, I will now explicitly tell which execution instance I'm in interested in. So I have to specify an explicit SQL exec start in the given format, but you can, of course, uh, customize that uh, date format mask in the configuration section. And I need also this corresponding SQL exec ID. And I now pick this information uh, from the historic configuration set from the historic hash. Uh, this parameter now, this search for last execution is not applicable in this case, uh, simply because I have explicitly say, said which execution instance I'm interested in. So it doesn't uh, make any sense to say where to search for the last execution because all the required information is now explicitly mentioned here. And the point that I want to make is that um, <clears throat> although we have a far less number of, of samples available, that's, that's the nature of this uh, his, historic hash functionality, the crucial information is still available. So you can see here the uh, actual degree. Again, basically the same information that we got from the current active session history. So we get the actual degree, we get even the information about these uh, parallel worker processes. We could even see that all those samples were on CPU. All that stuff is available. It's less granular, but nevertheless very, very helpful. And I've, in a, in, in, if I repeat the same um, thing for the other execution that um, is now also available in the historic hash, I can uh, that is not going to work because I have forgotten to, to specify the, the, the SQL ID. Just to get rid of this nice uh, things here. Uh, this is the SQL ID that I'm interested in. And now I'm specifying the other uh, SQL exec start of the second execution and the SQL exec ID. And again, I will tell it to pick the information. It would be now available from both sources, actually, if, because it's still available in the current ash, but it's also available in the historic ash. So you could, we could even compare the two outputs. Um, and we will see again here the confirmation that this was no parallel execution, that we did not see any um, parallel workers here active. So again, we can see here that we can very easily confirm such downgrade cases, at least from 11.202 on, um, absolutely exactly. In previous releases, you just get this educated guess, this best guess um, information, what parallel degree got used, and uh, that's also available from the um, historic hash, and that is uh, Pretty helpful. And that's it for this part of the tutorial.